Hello learners, welcome to Mwalum class for our today's English lesson. I am teacher Naomi. So before we begin our lesson today, let us first revisit what we did in the previous lesson. Now in our previous lesson, we were learning how to use an apostrophe to show possession or ownership with nouns whose plural do not take s. Can you remind me an example of a noun whose plural does not take s? Very good, man. The plural of the word man is men. So the word men is in plural but does not take s. We said that we can use an apostrophe together with s to show that something belongs to somebody or something belongs to something. Using this apostrophe and s with those nouns whose plural do not take s. For example, if we want to show that something belongs to women, the word women is the plural word of the word woman. So the word women does not take s in plural. So after the word women, we put the apostrophe and then s. So if we were talking about these bags belongs to women, we would say these are women's bag. The apostrophe that comes between the last letter in the word women and s shows possession, ownership, that something belongs to somebody or something belongs to something. So after going through the lesson, I left you with an assignment. I want to believe you've done it. So let us go through it together so that you can check for yourself if you are able to get the correct answer. After looking at the, sh the possession using apostrophe, we looked at how to form contracted form of words using the apostrophe and we gave various examples. So our assignment was dealing with short form using the apostrophe. So let's see if you were able to give the correct answer. And the question was, use the correct word to fill in the gap. And the sentence is, dash living now. So here we are supposed to give the short form of the two words it is using an apostrophe. Which position is the right position to place the apostrophe to show the short form of the words it and is? So that is what the question was testing. Now, between among those four choices, that is A, B, C, and D, in which of those words is the apostrophe placed in its right position? What was your answer? Good. The answer is A. It's living now. Being the short form of it is living now. I want to believe you were able to get that one. So now let us turn to today's work. So today we shall be looking at reflexive pronouns. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to form a reflexive pronoun from a personal pronoun or a possessive pronoun. That is, next, you should also be able to differentiate between singular reflexive pronoun and plural reflexive pronoun pronouns. Lastly, you should be able to construct sentences using the reflexive pronouns correctly. So let us start by looking at what is this that we call pronouns. Now I want to believe in class 4 and class 5 you've learned parts of speech. And we know that there are eight parts of speech. We have nouns, verbs, adverbs, and pronoun is one of them. So what is a pronoun? 
Now, a pronoun is a word that we use to replace a noun. For example, if we want to say Mary is driving a car, instead of the word Mary, we can say she is driving a car. So she is a pronoun replacing the noun Mary. If John is driving a car, we can still reconstruct the sentence using a pronoun instead of the noun John. Now, which pronoun can we use to replace John? Very good. He. He is driving a car. So, we have personal pronouns. These are pronouns that replace names of things, names of people. We have he, she, and it in singular. Then we have they, we in plural. We have you, which can be in singular or plural. So from these personal pronouns is where we get the reflexive pronouns. So we shall be finding out how do we form a reflexive pronoun. Now first, before we form it, let us know what is this that... Uh, when do we use a reflexive pronoun? Now, we use a reflexive pronoun in a sentence which has the subject being the same as the object. Now, when we talk about the subject, the person doing the action, the object is the person receiving the action. So, if in a sentence, the person doing the action is the same person receiving the action, then we use a reflexive pronoun. Now, how do we form a reflexive pronoun? Go, pay attention, be with me and find out how we form a reflexive pronoun. Now, a reflexive pronoun is formed by using the word self for singular and selves for plural. So, the singular pronouns like I, he, she, and it. We add self to each of them to form a singular pronoun. For example, for the word I, we have the possessive pronoun my. So from this possessive pronoun, we add self. Then we get the word my self. So myself is a singular pronoun. So in a sentence we could say, I drove the car myself. Let us see another singular reflexive pronoun. We have the pronoun he, which we get its object pronoun as him. So from him, if we add self, we get the reflexive pronoun himself. We can say he is riding the bicycle himself. Now let us look at the third one. We have her. A singular personal object pronoun. If we add self, what do we get? Herself. Correct. That is the reflexive pronoun. Then still we have another singular reflexive pronoun. It. The one that represents animals, objects, and words like a baby or a child. So with it, if you add self, which reflexive pronoun do we get? Can we read? Yes, it's self. Lastly, we have the pronoun you. Now, the pronoun you, we get its reflexive pronoun by using its possessive form, which is you. So if you are talking to one person, it becomes singular. You will prepare the bicycle yourself. Now, if you are talking to two people, telling them they will repair the bicycle, you are, you will add your to selves. So you get your selves. So for this word your, it can be singular or plural, depending on how many people you are talking to. Yourself for one, yourselves for more than one. Now, after we have looked at how to form singular reflexive pronouns, let us now see 
how we form the plural reflexive pronouns. Now, for plural reflexive pronouns, we use the word selves. Remember, for singular, we were using the word self. Here, we are using the word selves. So, we take the given pronoun, then we add the word selves, and we get our plural reflexive pronoun. For example, we have the word our. So if we add selves to our, we get our selves. Look at those children cleaning the, the sides of the road. If you are part of them, you would say, we cleaned the road ourselves. Next, we have the plural pronoun them. We add selves and get which word? themselves. So themselves is a plural reflexive pronoun. We can say in a sentence, the mechanics repaired the vehicles themselves. Now, that is how we form reflexive pronouns. For singular, we use the word self. For plural, we use the word selves. One thing that we want to find out, how do we make a sentence correctly using reflexive pronoun? Now, a reflexive pronoun is not omitted in a sentence. And if it is omitted, then the sentence is not complete. If you omit it and then read the sentence or say the sentence, you will find out the sentence sounds incomplete. It feels that something has been left out. So let us look at the first sentence we have. An example of a sentence with a reflexive pronoun. Looking on the screen, you see somebody who has a hand that has been injured. So let us read the sentence. Peter hurt himself when repairing the car. Now I want us to read this sentence having omitted the word himself. And then find out, listen to yourself as you are reading the sentence. Find out if it sounds complete. Now let us read, Peter Hart when repairing the car. Automatically you feel something has been left out. So when you use a reflexive pronoun correctly, then it should be the object in the sentence. Although it is still referring to the subject, we talk about Peter, the doer, being the subject. Himself still we are referring to Peter. And Peter here is both the subject and the object. Another sentence showing how we use a reflexive pronoun in a sentence, whereby if it is omitted, the sentence is incomplete. Let us read, the driver injured himself. Now let us read it having omitted the word that is in blue. That is the word himself. The driver injured. So if you listen to yourself, you realize the sentence is not complete. We don't know what was injured. So until you put that reflexive pronoun is when you remember that or you realize that it is the driver who is injured. So the driver injured himself. Another example of a reflexive pronoun still showing us that when we want to use a reflexive pronoun, the only time we call it a reflexive pronoun is when it is not possible to be omitted in a sentence. Let us read the sentence together. The tourists drove themselves. Now, omit the word themselves and then let us read together. The tourist drove. You realize the sentence does not tell you who drove or what was driven. So until we put the word themselves, then the sentence is now complete. Let us now read it well. The tourist drove themselves. So that is how we use reflexive pronouns in sentences correctly. If you want to find out for yourself 
whether you've used the reflexive pronoun correctly, just omit it, read. And if you realize the sentence is incomplete, then know that until you put that reflexive pronoun in the sentence is the only time the sentence will make sense. It's only the time you will have communicated. Now, still another word or another sentence that shows that we cannot omit a reflexive pronoun. Let us read the sentence together. I cut myself with a knife. Try reading without the word myself. How does it sound? Very good. It sounds incomplete. So let's now read with the word myself. I cut myself with a knife. Now that is how we use reflexive pronouns in constructing sentences. Now we've come to the end of today's lesson. Remember, we have said we form reflexive pronoun from personal pronouns, whether possessive, it can be uh, possessive, subject or object pronoun, depending on which pronoun we are using. For example, for the first person pronoun I, we use the possessive form, my. The second person again, we use the possessive form, you are. For the other, the third person pronoun, that is he, she, and it, we use the object pronoun. For example, for he, we use him, which is the object pronoun. Again, we said when forming singular pronoun, which word do we use? Very good. The word self. So, my self. That is a singular reflexive pronoun. Then, what do we say about forming plural reflexive pronoun? Which word do we use? Good. We use the word selves. So, for example, us, which is the first person pronoun but plural, we form its reflexive pronoun from its possessive form our. Because it is in plural, we use the word selves. So it is our plus selves. We get our selves. So let us now look at the activity. We are supposed to check it and then assess ourselves. Use this activity to assess yourself whether you are able to understand the use of possessive pronouns, the formation of possessive pronouns, how to form singular pronoun, how to form plural pronoun, and how to use it in a sentence. So let us do the activity with you. Read. Fill in the gap with the correct reflexive pronoun. So before you get the reflexive pronoun, you have to understand which one is the subject in that sentence. After finding out the subject, find out the formation of the reflexive pronoun of that particular subject. So let us read the sentence. She injured Dash when riding a bicycle. The subject here is she. She is the one who did this action of injury. So, which reflexive pronoun is formed for this personal pronoun she? Uh -huh. The reflexive pronoun is herself. So, let us now read the sentence with that word. She injured herself when riding a bicycle. If you remove it, you realize that the sentence will not sound correct. Can we try that? She injured when riding a bicycle. So, I am sure, or I want to believe that, at this point, you are able to form a reflexive pronoun from a given personal pronoun or possessive pronoun. You are able to form singular reflexive pronoun as well as plural reflexive pronouns.
Now, I will leave you with an assignment that you will do. And then when we meet in the next lesson, you will check whether you did it correctly. So let us meet in our next lesson. Bye.